I'm John McGill. I think I know most people in here or try to remember most people. Um, I, I think I showed a stepper motor in, in Scranton in 2012, which is kind of probably a year or so after I started playing with them. Stepper motors are not easy to understand, but I get a lot of questions and we've been embarking on an interesting project, so I thought I'd take this Pecha Kucha time to talk about stepper motors and tell you everything you need to know in six minutes or less. So this is a stepper motor. Um, what I always say to people is the fact that it has motor in its name should mean nothing to you because it's not like any motor you've ever seen before. I don't have a good way to describe these. I've tried now to say, think of it as a digital motor or something like that. It, it, they turn in increments. They don't run like a normal motor. And that's because inside there's a, a magnet in the center and a number of coils around the outside. You can see the detents on the magnet there, and I'll show in the next picture, it'll make a little bit more sense. But uh, typically, the combination of those detents ends up having a motor align with poles 200 times around as it goes around in a circle, one revolution. So there's a north and a south magnet with detents or cog teeth on it that rotates inside this series of coils that are all electrified by some circuits we'll talk about in a second. But the applications for stepper motors, when I first learned about stepper motors, I said, these are ideal for ornamental turning. Everything we do is slow and or it requires torque at slow speed, which is exactly the opposite of all the motors we've known and grown up with the rest of our lives. So stepper motors are ideal to drive the spindle of a rose engine. They're outstanding for very slow motion of a slide rest. And although Al did a great job building jillions of gears, this was what I told Fred years ago, you don't want to make the gears for a spiral apparatus or reciprocator. You want some mathematical ratio driving two different motors and make the magic happen. So this is a stepper motor, a little tiny stepper motor. This is a NEMA 17, which means it's 1.7 inches square. That's how big it is. You can see it's just clamped onto the end of my hard inch slide rest there. And uh, then I just have a timing belt going between there and the hand crank. So with this setup, you can still turn the crank on the slide rest you know, to get it manually positioned where you want, and then just turn on, oops, uh, I got it out of order, but you'll see the controller for this later. It's on, off, forward, reverse, and speed. You know, nothing magic. It's very, very simple, except that you got to understand the electronics behind it to make it work. And then last but not least, in terms of applications, although there's thousands and thousands of applications, this is a wacky one that uh, grew out of something else I showed at uh, Scranton, which was a spherical slide rest. This is my latest rendition of a spherical slide rest that I've shown for a couple years now where I just have a magnet pivoted center and I put a string on a bobbin that the stepper motor, try the, the stepper motor's down here and I just have a bobbin here that I've wound string on and the string just goes around a circular end of my slide rest here. So no matter where it pulls from, it's always pulling on a tangent. So it's a very nice smooth force and it's just able to pull it through and turn at a very, very slow rate so that you can have however many revolutions of the spindle you want for each incremental motion around the arc of the spherical slide rest itself. Uh, there's samples of these in the other room. You can go see the arcs and things like that. And I've given long talks on this before, but it's just yet another one of the applications you get with these stepper motors. So stepper motors are not easy. You need a bunch of parts and pieces and it gets complicated really quickly. But essentially from left to right, you have, you have to have some kind of a brain. I started playing around with an Arduino microcontroller a few years ago. And then the first stepper motor driver, I'll talk about these as the slides go on, but that red block in the middle is a thing that takes the signals from the brain and turns them into the things that the motor on the far right needs to move incrementally through those 200 detents to make a full circle. So the first thing you need is what's called a driver, a stepper driver. And these are commonly referred to as step and direction drivers because you feed them, you tell them what direction you wanna go, clockwise or counterclockwise, which really is only high or low. They don't know which way is clockwise or counterclockwise. That depends on how you wire it. And the, the drivers can be anything from the size of a postage stamp in the upper left to the far right, which I call kind of the industrial scale ones that can drive motors up to multiple amps of current required. And in the middle is an, kind of a middle one. That particular one drives about up, motors up to about three amps, which is 
more than almost anything we need to do in ornamental turning. Um, so the first part back in that previous slide was you have to have a brain. And uh, you, know, you can do anything with a computer, but it's a slippery slope. If you bring a full-blown PC into the shop, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be doing full-blown CNC, G-code and everything else. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted an appliance connected to my lathe that I could turn on and have it do a task for me while I did other things and come back and turn it off. Um, the Arduino is ideal for that. It's just a sort of a single task little computer. It's a microcontroller. On the left is my favorite brand of that, which is an Arduino compatible thing called a Teensy, and it's about the size of two postage stamps and has more memory than the, and capacity than the computers that flew us to the moon. So, and they cost 19 bucks. You know, you can't really argue with that. Um, at the AAW, I had uh, the, the lathe that I have in here. The AAW was in Portland in June, and I did a talk on stepper motors, which is what motivated me to expand on that here and talk a little more about where they can be applied in ornamental turning. But this is the apparatus. I've got it out on the table in there. You can see it or come ask questions if you don't understand something. Uh, this is two of the industrial drivers to drive a slide rest and uh, the spindle on that, that lathe. And it's got two power supplies, which you, you can usually get away with one, but it just complicates the electronics a little further. Here I've got a 5-volt power supply on the left to talk to the brain and a 24-volt power supply on the right, which gives the power and oomph to get the motors moving. When you're wiring it all up, it looks like this. You've got a microcontroller that's giving step and direction, those two bottom blue arrows, into the driver, of which there's many flavors, but they all take step and direction. And then with two power supplies, I just put this diagram in here because it shows sort of the two power supplies, one providing the logic to the brain, the far one providing the power supply to move the motors, the motive power, which depending on the motors and what you're doing can you know, be up to and into the 40 volt range, but it can also be as low as a few volts depending on your motors. Um, and then you have to have some way to talk to the brain that's externalized to the user, so that's always called a user interface in the computer world. The simple one, which I have out there on my machine, is just buttons. Red for stop, green for go, and black for direction, and then knobs to turn to change the speed. You know, no college degree required, anybody can use it. But then we've been also expanding on that. When I say we, I'll talk about the gang at the end here. But um, we have, uh, this all started as an outgrowth of some stuff I was working on. And we've adopted a touch screen, a serial interface touch screen, which is a virtual set of buttons. So you can have the touch screen be anything, run, stop, speed, index, change. And so this is, happens to be on one of the screens that Tom Johansson took a picture of showing the indexing. Well, indexing is arbitrary. The best application of indexing I ever saw was before Robert Sockway passed away. He was using indexing with a, I think it was a Sherline provided uh, stepper motor interface. Um, but he had that indexing a pencil chuck on his straight line machine to index, and you can index in prime numbers or things that don't exist on index wheels because it's just math being done by a little computer inside this device. But this is an example where you can set the index size, it counts to anything arbitrary you want, uh, prime numbers or, or by degrees. So it has just an infinite number of applications. You can see on the other tabs, index two is highlighted at the top, but slow, fast, index one, and then configuration. So in this case, we have it set up so you can enter your gear ratio from your stepper motor to the main pulley that's on your machine. And then, as I always like to say, there's just a small matter of software. This is usually, in addition to the complexity of stepper motors, the other thing that sort of cripples people is you got to write software to talk to these things to make them work. And uh, courtesy of what we've been working on sort of over the last couple of years and rolled up, I think this will all be available to everybody to go do anything you want with anything you want to apply it to in your own shops. What we were doing with it is I made some stepper motor pulleys, um, some timing pulleys, that uh, I adapted with a bracket on the back of the MDF lathe to drive the spindle. And this let me put the stepper motor inside the headstock. And this funky looking shaped plate that you see is just, it's pivoted on one side. So I get belt tension and a full wrap around that pulley, a full 180 degree wrap around that pulley in one device with just two bolts holding it to the headstock. To make this accessible to a bunch of other people, we've sort of tried to standardize the design while also being as flexible as we could going forward. 
So Ed French uh, worked diligently on designing uh, to everybody's needs a two driver printed circuit board that has a place in the middle of it there for the TNC 3.2, the little brain we're using. A chip above that, the 74HCT245 is a thing that does level shifting. You don't care about what that is. The magic is you put power in one side, you load the software on it, and out the other side you can drive two different motors to do two different things. So this is a two axis board, but we, we designed it so it would work with all three of those drivers you saw in the earlier picture. The little tiny one about the size of a postage stamp which can drive motors up to about uh, one and a half, 2.2 amps with a fan and a heat sink. The one in the middle drives up to three amps and the one on the end, the industrial size one that I've got in the other room, you can get those in any size up to I think seven or more amps. And this board will drive any one or all of those in any combination you want. And here's a picture of that board with some of the components soldered onto it the way I was, I'm configuring it to use for uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing, but it could be set up for any, th any one of those three drivers in whatever combination you want. Um, and there was something I was going to say about that. I just lost the thought. Um, so this is, this is the two driver system I've got out there on the table um, that, uh, oh, going back, I don't, the things you can't see here, this is just modified to the way I wanted to set it up. and. Somebody else made a comment about, uh, maybe it was Eddie, just finishing days before. We just got these printed circuit boards back last week and I was soldering one the night before I drove here, so that's why it's only partially populated. So you're not the only one with last minute itis. Uh, and I think I got these onto the Dropbox uh, about two hours ago. Anyway, this is the two driver system I have in the other room. You can look at it and uh, we have multiple MDF lathes over there. Brad Husby's, John Moe's, Tom, uh, Tom's is, is not here, Ed's is here, and, my, and I've got a couple over there. Come ask questions, you can see whatever we've got going. Um, Brad's has the touch screen running on it, John's has the touch screen, and Ed of course has the touch screen because he started that whole thing. And so on that note, I have to say to the gang, or about the gang, the thank yous and, and sort of the credit where credit is due. I think John Moe sort of kept kicking me in the butt because motorizing the MDF was tough in the beginning and I had showed this back in Scranton, but I hadn't documented anything to make it easy. So he kept nudging me and then Ed showed up on the scene and, and uh, started helping out with the printed circuit board, the circuitry. He did a uh, soldering tutorial class. This was right after I moved down to Oregon and as John Moe would say, left them high and dry. Uh, Ed stepped in and taught them how to solder and uh, I think even had some crimpers. <laughs> There's a lot of soldering and crimping and other things. And then uh, uh, Tom was the uh, guinea pig number two, Tom Johansson, and then Brad Husby's quickly catching up and uh, almost there. Where I put the, um, you saw a glimpse of the GitHub page which Ed has hosted that has the uh, software on it. I'm putting together a resources page on my website, rogueturner.com, and that'll have everything you need to know about getting a board, make, getting the parts, bill of material, uh, and then links to the software hardware. Red, Ed has designed a, an enclosure for the touch screens, and we're kind of trying to get from the guinea pig version of bill of materials to the real world bill of materials with the printed circuit board you just saw. And if you want to go down this path, you should be able to have all the material there that will get you going. And so come see all the stepperized MDFs we have here and ask any questions you want. That's it.